for this morning session, the, the first part will be uh, a presentation of uh, some of the projects that Nucleo participates in about that are designed for teachers. So uh, most of them are restricted to the countries that uh, the partners of these projects uh, are from because there are Erasmus Plus projects, but others are open for everyone. And, and even then, the resources that are produced in these Erasmus uh, projects, they are available for everyone that are open resources. So even if the, the school's participation are restricted, uh, all of you can, can follow the activities of the, of the project and use it, it, its ideas, its resources in your countries. And I think this is the, one of the great powers of these projects. Gustavo, let me just uh, go ahead mm -hmm. and say, although they don't participate officially, all the countries, with one or two exceptions, I think Reflecting for Change was the exception, uh, they can always participate and have the support. Nuclear is also support, always supporting the countries that want to participate that are not part of the consortium. Okay, good. So I'm going to start my presentation, my first one. So hope you can see my slides now. So let me tell you about GSTARS. So GSTARS is well, Erasmus Plus project that uh, has partners in Greece, where the coordinators are from, Portugal, which is uh, Nucleo, and Austria, where the, with the Austrian Space Forum, and Germany. So is a, a project that uh, uses uh, digital storytelling, so the the skill of storytelling, which is uh, very much in, uh, uh, in vogue now. Uh, storytelling is, is being used everywhere. And so how you can use this uh, skill to improve your, your science teaching, not only science, but all the STEM and STEAM uh, contents. So STEAM is for science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And in this case, uh, the, the main theme of the, the project that, that will be the basis for the storytelling is uh, space exploration. So the participants, they will have access to a, a digital storytelling platform. Uh, this is uh, like a digital book, it's, a, it's a, a web application where the students can create their own stories. So it has access to elements, visual elements, uh, so like uh, 3D models of rockets, of space bases, of astronauts. So it's a it's very complete set of resources that the students can use, they can create their own scenarios like, you know, in a, in a cartoon, in animation, and use these uh, resources for creating the stories that will tell a story of science exploration. In particular, the, 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 the target of these explorations will be the moon and Mars. I must say that the stars is built upon the previous experience of a project called uh, Stories of Tomorrow that was uh, dedicated also for storytelling in, in Mars exploration. And now we are expanding it to the moon, which makes sense because the moon is our nearest neighbor in space. So you know, we are all talking now about going to Mars. There is a new space race uh, taking it taking place right now. And, uh, but the moon is the obvious uh, first choice for space exploration because it's much, much closer than, than Mars. And also it's the only place that humans have ever set foot on. So uh, we will be back on the moon uh, and I will be back on the moon soon. 
And if you really want to explore the space, explore the resources of our solar system, uh, building a permanent base on the moon, it's paramount, it's something that uh, uh, needs to be achieved because there's no other place like Earth, at least in the solar system. So we will need to learn how to to, to survive in these uh, hostile environments of the other planets. Uh, the human body was, had not evolved to survive in, in the outer space. So we need to really to, to make a safe environment for humans in space. And that's where a space basis uh, idea come from. So, but I, I, what I'm, I'm going to show you is not going to take too much time because we have many other projects to, to, to show you is the part of the educational toolkit and resources that will support teachers and will support uh, the students uh, to create these digital stories because we want these stories to be science based. So it's not going to be uh, far out, you know, oh, I'm going to travel to the moon and I'm going to build a base and I'm going to to plant a tree on the moon, <laughs> it's not going to survive. It's going it needs to be something that's credible. So uh, that's where the educational uh, toolkits and resources come from. So to 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 give the teachers and students uh, scientific knowledge to 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 create their stories, so they're not you no know, totally out of hand of in terms of uh, credibility. Um, so these two kits are being produced by Nucleo and excuse me. Okay, so it contains the background information on, on not only the moon but other uh, places in the solar system and how space exploration. Uh, what kind of information? Space exploration has brought us about the moon, about the asteroids, about the planets, and what are the plans for the future. Uh, so it's an informative content. It's not very deep because you know, there are so many things on the internet. So it's more like a guide. So one thing that is very common uh, for teachers, especially in astronomy, because it's, there's little content on the, the school books or the textbooks, is that you don't know where to start. So what you do, you do, you go for Google and you type astronomy. And, and we know that the internet uh, it's, it's a fantastic tool, uh, but it has a lot of unverified content and things that are not very right. So this is a, a, a big issue these days. How, how can you tell what kind of information is reliable? Uh, this is for everything. So when you have something like a small guide that you know, look, this is where you where you should start. This is the kind of basic knowledge that uh, you can start, and then you you know at least something that uh, that you you'll be able to judge if that information is correct or not. So this is, is the is one of the goals of these uh, resources that we are, we are collecting. And this will be available on the GSTARS website, which I'll show you uh, later on. So this, is, this will be available for everyone, so these resources. And this will be collected uh, in the uh, form of uh, booklets. But before I show you the book, booklets, the projects, uh, let me just comment that other goal of the stars is to, to let the students be aware of how can how they can engage in science exp exploration, in space exploration, because when uh, every kid uh, wants to be an astronaut, I think, and most of the people, not only children but adults, when they think about space exploration, they only think about astronauts, and this is perhaps the most hard and disputed job in the Earth because. Only it's less than 600 people have ever been to space. <laughs> About the, the, the billions of people on Earth, only uh, it's less than 1,000 people have ever flown to space. So 
it's a very very exclusive club and and when people start to think about it uh, i'm not from a country that engages in space exploration i'm too old i'm not physically fit uh they give up but the, the astronaut is you know is the is the pinnacle of a very uh large endeavor that is space exploration you need to have uh, thousands of people working to put an astronaut in space and these many thousands of people they have the most diverse backgrounds and and skills so that's where common people will say that we play a very important role in space exploration so this is the goal of careers in space exploration and in the future maybe our, our students now uh they will work perhaps in the future in space exploration because humans will explore in space it's just uh, a matter of time and we are seeing right now if the new company is launching uh rockets space we just saw that in the past few weeks uh the flights of blue origin and uh virgin galactic there are examples of the start of uh, companies, enterprises uh, flying to space. That's is a very new uh, reality that we are just witnessing the, the start of this new phase of space exploration. So there are jobs for space exploration for everyone. There are careers. And if your kids like space, you need to then, uh, you don't need to be an astronaut. If you can be one, that's fantastic. But you can uh, play a major role in space exploration by uh, a lot of different careers. So these are just some examples of the, the careers that you can, you can engage in uh, to play a part in space exploration. And also astronomy, I'll say that. Uh, the astronomers, astrophysicists are also, of course, are one of the careers that are related to space exploration. Because if you want to explore space, you need to characterize very well the, the, the target that, that you're going to explore. Uh, later today, we'll talk about asteroids and asteroids. We have to study them very well before we plan a mission to an asteroid. Uh, but there are many others, you know, for even for a cooker, uh, astronauts need to eat. So, uh some somebody will need to cook for him while he's in training for him or her uh the nutritionist who will study the best diet that uh the astronauts will will consume in space uh psychologist uh you know the astronauts need to have a very strong frame of mind so uh i have a friend that works as a psychologist in astronaut training uh, so there are, these are just a few of the examples of the careers that can play a part in supporting astronauts to explore space. <clears throat> and I, I bet that geez, there's a room for everyone here. So if, if you don't have uh, all, all the, the skill set of, for being an astronaut, you can go for another path and help people help you manage to conquer space. These terms will also offer regular webinars about topics in science exploration. So there, we not only promote uh, the, the webinars, but also share the webinars by my partners and other organizations. So there will be a, a calendar of webinars in our website when the project kicks off officially. Uh, for schools that it's going to be in late September, early October. So keep an eye on. Uh, and the most important thing is, is that it's a collaborative platform. So the teachers that are uh, participating in the project, the schools, they will be able to share their experiences and build something together and across nations. So this is uh, one of the, the major points of the project that's the the platform will also allow the collaboration between teachers 
And there will be a, 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 a section of the website that's called Inspiration Corner, that where some resources will be highlighted uh, that to, to inspire the students and teachers to create their stories. Okay, so what about the booklets? So this is the part that uh, Nucleo is uh, most actively involved in, and it's uh, our uh, main theme of these booklets is the moon. Uh, for the stories of tomorrow, the booklets were produced for Mars exploration, and now we come closer to home. We are going to tell you what in these booklets the story of the moon. So in fact, those are four booklets, four individual booklets that together uh, make a, a larger story. And uh, they will tell you about the moon. It's called the moon in nutshell. So what we know about the moon, how do we reach the moon? So it's the trip to the moon is, we'll tell you about rockets, about the story of moon exploration. Then, uh, how do we map the moon? How would you know uh, what is on the moon? So that's the exploring the moon uh, from Earth-based telescopes or from robotic uh, expeditions or from human expeditions to the moon. So what we have learned from uh, the, the more than 50 years of moon exploration and also uh, what what lies ahead in plans of exploring the moon, and finally living on the moon. So, what are the plans to have bases on the moon? I remember when I was a, a kid, and that's you know, it's unfortunately, it's, it's been a uh, distant thing in the past. But uh, I remember when I was like ten years old, and I went to to, to bookstores. I really enjoyed going to bookstores, and then. There were books about, you know, oh, in the year 2000, humans will be on the moon, there will be space stations, and you no know, people will be permanently leaving space, and uh, that not happen. <laughs> the future is, is totally different from the, what those books said. But I think sometimes I think, oh, maybe I, I might do the same thing here, telling, oh, we'll be on the moon, there will be bases. I really hope so. And I think if humanity were more, you know, uh, dedicated to, to, to improve things instead of you know, just accumulating uh, wealth and a few a handful of people hands, we'd be already be living on the moon. But it's, it's beyond my, our competences to, to, to make this happen. So it's a, it's a very costly project to, 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 to achieve this. So it needs either, you know, many nations working together or rich individuals or corporations so so we'll see uh we'll see what lies ahead in the future but the fact is that our plans that are very solid plans of how we, we can live on the moon and perhaps our students uh will be on the moon someday uh in the second half of the century and so the Moon in a Child is first booklet is about you know telling what what the moon represents to, to the humankind in terms of mythology, calendars, what our ancestors knew about the moon from the early observations, what role the moon plays in popular culture. So the moon has a very significant uh, role in shaping humanity. As a species. Uh, somebody no, has the mic open, could you please? No. Uh, Grea, da, culmea, că vrea echivalare pentru unul. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, this first booklet will be like an introduction to, to this important role that, that the moon plays in humanity. And also tells about uh, the physical aspects of the Earth and the moon system. In fact, the Earth Sun Moon system. So eclipses and moon phases, and the role that the moon plays on tides, that's a very uh, uh, relevant uh, physical effect that the moon plays in, on our planet in terms of the, the gravity. So there will be explanations of this phenomenon. 
And every booklet will have a suggestion of activities that you can uh, use in your classes to, to explain these concepts to your students. So these are just a few examples of the, the types of activities, hands-on activities, digital activities, that these will be detailed, uh, not only in the booklet, but also in the inspiration corner of the website. Uh, the second booklet is Trip to the Moon. So we'll tell all about the, the exploration of the moon, the, the, uh, reaching the moon via space flight. So how these ideas started, how the first rockets were built, and how they evolved to the rocket set where it used to reach the moon, culminating in the space race and the Apollo missions in the uh, late 1960s early 1970s and then we fast forward to the, the current uh, space age which is we have a new space race foundations and from corporations so what lies ahead uh, in the exploration of the moon and also as as all all the other booklets will be, there will be some fun activities that you you can use in your class the third booklet is about exploring the moon. So uh, how scientists know what is in the moon, both on the surface and below surface. So if you want to have a permanent base on the moon, we have to extract the resources from the moon itself. We're not going to send uh, rockets with air to breathe to the moon every day. So it's very expensive. So for this, um, for this uh, operation to be uh, sustainable, uh, we have to learn how to extract the resources for, uh, from the moon and from the other planets and other objects of the solar system. So well, we need everything. We need air to breathe, we need water to drink, we need food to eat, and we need energy to run all the systems. So, uh, this concept will be explored uh, on, on the final booklet. So how, how do you achieve that? But before that, you need to, to characterize uh, the, the moon. So know where is the best space to build a base, where can, we can find the resources and so on. So the, the, this booklet will be about uh, mapping the moon and discovering its physical properties. And we will share some, some resources that you can use to to introduce the subjects in your classroom in the activities part. And finally, Living on the Moon, the fourth booklet, that is what are the plans for building the lunar base? And as I mentioned, the, the main necessities that you have, water, food, raw materials, air. Do you have an idea how we can extract air and food and water from the moon? Uh, I can see the chat. Uh, you know, maybe Rosa can help me if somebody comments or something. But do you have an idea how we can extract air, for instance? Well, uh, we have to cultivate ourselves. Yes. Okay. And air. What about the air or the water? Water is easy. Any messages? Water by electrolysis. Yes, it can be by electrolysis, but there is also ice. You know, there is proven that some craters on the moon, very deep craters near the pole, have ice on the bottom because those are places that the sunlight never hits. So not only on, Mar on the moon, but also on Mars, there is water ice. So it's yeah, but, a possibility. Uh, but we have to dig them. We have to dig that. Yeah. Robots, we dig, <laughs> not not uh, humans, but you know, uh, machines will you will make this, and this is a, a possible source of water. Uh, and there, it can be by electrolysis, but we can also extract, for instance, oxygen from the soil of the moon because the soil of the moon is most silica, which is a silicon and oxygen. So there's a lot of oxygen trap it uh, in the moon soil. So some, some ideas uh, include how we can liberate this oxygen 
You know, it's going to be expensive. It's going to be hard with a lot of energy. But fortunately, we have uh, uh, almost infinite source of energy, which is sunlight. So uh, sunlight will be a, a major part of exploring the moon. And but we have to learn how to store the, the, the energy that is uh, produced by the, the solar uh, fuel units because the night on the moon is very long, it lasts two weeks. So it's going to, to, we need to learn how to store this energy to provide the energy necessary to, to extract the, the you know, oxygen or water from the raw materials that you find on the moon and allow us to cultivate. Uh, the food on, on the basis. Uh, and there are also some activities that kids can play. So they can, this is good, I think, for the, the younger kids to, to make you know, a play about uh, being on the moon, how, how is the base, what are the, the, uh, the features of a lunar base, like the airlock. So this will be also featured on, on the booklets. Gustavo, you have a question. Can we use yes. micronuclear reactors, fusion? Yes, nuclear nuclear energy. It's a, a very you know uh, polemic uh, matter because there have been accidents on Earth, but when you no know, correctly managed is I think is the the most uh, safe and also the most the the, the the kind of energy that pollutes. The least is less aggressive to to the environment, but it requires extremely care and constant, you know, monitors. The safety standards are really really high. Uh, in fact, uh, many of the spacecraft, I don't know if the Voyagers, uh, maybe Sandra can, can can confirm this, but many of the spacecraft that have explored the, the planets have small nuclear reactors uh, on board. So yes, it's it's a possibility, but there are other kinds of energy, like the sun itself, is a, a, a very possible. But if you want, if you think about exploring the outer planets, you know those planets that are really far away from the sun, uh, then sunlight probably won't be enough. So we need to think about other sources, and there's probably nuclear energy is the is the best bet. Uh, as far as we know. So I invite you to visit the, the website where you find more information. You can register your school to participate in the project. So especially if you are from one of, of the partner countries, uh, please register your school. So if you are from Portugal, if you are from Greece, if you are from Austria, if you are from Germany, am I missing anyone, Rosa? No. Yeah. No, for and, and as I said, if you are from any country, just just join the project. We will find a way to to include you. Yeah. And yes, please join, register your school, and the activities will start as soon as the, the school year returns here in Europe. So it's around the second half of September, or early October, the latest, we will start uh, the activities. <laughs> Somebody just uh, are scratching the, the screen. So, <laughs> uh, so please uh, visit the website. It's gstars.eu and you can, you, you can gather more information, register your school, and we, we, we will continue uh, our conversation uh, in the years to come. Uh, probably in this summer school, if you check it, the box during your registration that you will, will allow us to contact you, you will also receive a newsletter about this terms from Nucleo uh, very soon. So thank you, thank you. It is all for this terms, which will kick off very soon. And now Rosa will tell you about other projects and I'll be back to to tell about last skill that is going to, to start a bit later. So let's save it for the end. Okay, Rosa, back to you. Well, I guess also Fraser is going to talk a little bit about uh, last skill. And actually, we don't have much uh, much time. Gustavo, thank you very much. I think you, you spoiled everything for me because I'm not nearly as well prepared as you were to present uh, 
uh, our project. Um, but uh, I, I'm going to present one that is uh, in the same line as uh, these stars. Um, I'm going to share my screen and then after that I jump into the website. So, okay, I'm sorry for the Portuguese. I didn't know. Oh, wait, 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 just a second. Just a second, I have to do something here, which is take out the sound. Sound over. Okay, so um, I, I I thought okay, I have a, a PowerPoint ready. I forgot that it was in Portuguese because it was for the team that participated in our uh, training. We trained a lot of teachers in, in Portugal this year, but um, in in any case, it's uh, I usually as usual in my presentations, I don't have a lot of text, and in fact, uh, several of the the things that I have presented to you. Uh, were uh, part of uh, what we have in this project. So Our Space, Our Future is a project that uh, aims to, um, uh, someone is having fun drawing things in the, in the, in the board. <laughs> so um, this project uh, main aim is to motivate students towards a career in uh, space. That's the main objective wow. of the project. And I think Gustavo explained it uh, really very nicely, uh, the types uh, and, and, and how many uh, uh, professions a person can have. But I think it's a, a little bit more in depth than that. It's not only um, uh, motivating students that space exploration is fun, but it's also uh, making sure that you promote inclusion when you are doing this, that you avoid stereotypes, that you have everyone in your in your classroom believe that if they want to, they can become space explorers and they can have any profession that they want. Because this is a message that doesn't really pass across when we are at school. And we find many kids that they, they love uh, to, to hear about astronomy, they love to hear about space, but somehow down the line, they lose the, 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 the idea that uh, um, they, can, they can do it themselves. So um, I'm passing another slide. You don't hear the, the recording, Gustavo. You don't hear the, the, the no, recording that is on the slide. No. no? No, OK, good. So as Gustavo said, um, what's important is uh, to know how do you prepare to work in this area that you might find so important uh, for yourself. So Gustavo presented all the, the different careers. And the other thing is to um, uh, present to people this idea on why do we have to invest in space exploration? Why this is important? And I've covered this in my presentation already. So these are things that we want to, to cover when we are working with people. We also uh, want to present concrete examples on how space exploration uh, uh, impacts our lives because we don't know, but many of the things that we have in our daily life are directly coming from research uh, done to develop technology for space exploration. And of course, all the money that is invested in that comes directly back to us, right? Because it's invested in industry, in manpower. It's also the aspect of having science literacy of what it means to be human, what it means to bring humans outside of Earth and how to make people understand what's our place in the cosmos and avoid these misconceptions or lack of knowledge of uh, what it is to be uh, a space explorer. So the idea that, uh, that we promote is to, um, engage students in hands-on activities. And there is a toolkit being prepared that will be online very soon with a series of activities that you can perform with your students, um, hands-on activities, lots of them, to be, to be rovers on Mars, to explore the solar system, to understand the phases of the moon, uh, to understand the constellations, the phases of Venus, all of this uh, in, a, in a format uh, that you can do with hands-on, with your students in the classroom. 
The project also is going to present a series of activities uh, and you have seen several examples of those in this training course mm -hmm. where you use uh, planetary software, where you process images with the students, where you use robotic telescopes, where you do scientific research in classroom. So it's uh, everything that we have been doing this week with you is uh, the vision that we have for this project is to provide you the, 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 the possibility of replicating it with your students. So basically all of you are uh, perfectly now capable of being part of this project. And we, we strongly advise you and invite you to participate. But it's not only involving um, you and your students, it's also involving the community and explaining to the community in your schools the importance of what we are doing, why it's important that the students learn about ex space exploration, why this is important in their daily lives. So this is something that we are also willing to do. And if you are not in one of the countries that is part of the partnership uh, and you don't have a national coordinator, Nuclear will be delighted to support you online if you want to engage into implementing this project with your students, with the community that, uh, that is served uh, by your school. The project has also developed a series of uh, very nice uh, tools, mm -hmm. like for instance, these icons that try to depict the different, uh, uh, the different uh, professions. And as you can see, it's very inclusive. So it's, it's depicting scientists nor as normal people. So a scientist is not someone that is looking like Einstein or someone that is super fancy or someone that has a, a super intelligence or someone, it, it's just a person, a normal person like any one of us who chose to be a scientist in the field that can benefit space exploration. So these icons here are very good to, to, to help to show to your students the type of careers that exist, uh, the, sorry, uh, the type of careers that exist in space. I want to go back. So it's depicting, depicting females and males, different races uh, uh, and, and different, different uh, professions. And it's nice that you can use this. And I will show you that you have access to that uh, in, the, in the kit. Um, sorry, in the virtual campus, you have a kit from our space or future that I will show in a moment. You also have the possibility to create, students also have the possibility to create their own avatars. And I will talk about this uh, in a moment. So I, I will stop the presentation and I stop sharing. And I will go to, to I'm going to share with you. Let me just make sure that. Yes, okay. Let me share uh, the website where I have this and other projects to show you. So as I said, um, okay, uh, okay, this is not the platform that I want to share with you guys. Where do I have this one? Okay, I'm sorry, I just shared this, the wrong platform. And now I lost you guys. Okay, and stop sharing. And now I'm going to share again. And this is the one that I want to share. Okay, so this is the website of the project. Uh, it's uh, ourspaceourfuture.eu. Uh, and here you find uh, all the information about uh, the project per se, uh, who are the partners and uh, uh, what is the vision of the project. You can find uh, the resources, you can uh, create your own avatar here. And uh, this is one of the features that I like the best because uh, actually I have used it. It, uh, it, it helps you um, help students create their own avatars. Uh, you can, uh, they can mimic uh, their, their classroom. You also have the project resources. Uh, you find uh, external resources and you will find the toolkit here. And uh, what I have done, is uh, let me open here, grasp and show you uh, where you can find it in the in the campus, in the virtual campus. This is our virtual campus. Uh, let me show here the page view, and you will find that uh, uh, in the campus you have now a new uh, a new uh, tab that's called our space our future, and here you will find all the the animated gifs that I have shared with you already so that you can use with your students, illustrate your lessons with the students or just give it to them so they can invent their own stories. 
you can find uh, several coloring sheets also depicting uh, different professions uh, in the space exploration. And you can find several logos also depicting uh, different uh, careers. And you have male and female, um, male and female uh, icons. And you have some links here uh, to a few uh, very inspiring um, uh, pay, uh, pages. One of them is uh, Dia Zero in Ireland have uh, created uh, a series of interviews with people working in the space careers. Space awareness has uh, uh, not only resources about um, space exploration and all the activities that you can do with your students, but also a, a very nice booklet on space careers. And you also have this NASA home and city uh, where you can um, you can find out uh, where space exploration is impacting our daily lives. So these are very nice uh, examples on where uh, space exploration uh, can uh, help you to teach uh, whatever you want. This, uh, uh, this last one is one that I like uh, uh, very much. So you can use all these uh, tools and resources uh, freely. Uh, you just need to, for instance, here they already have the Our Space, Our Future logo. You just have to, to present the, the copyright. So it's here for you uh, to, to use uh, as uh, you wish. Uh, another project that, um, I don't know if there's any question, Gustavo, if you can keep an eye on the chat and uh, oh, actually I can open the chat here. Not, not, there's nothing. Nothing, nothing there. Okay, great. So, um, Another project that uh, we, we are working on is a project called Polar Star. It's a project uh, that is working on astronomy and uh, uh, polar science. We have experts in the field of uh, polar science uh, here. And uh, in the framework of the project, a series of things are being uh, created. The project um, uh, uses uh, a methodology so you've been uh, watching me advocate for uh, STEAM education uh, all along uh, this week. Uh, and actually I go beyond STEAM education. If for those of you that uh, don't know or don't remember, STEAM stands for science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. But uh, I, in fact, what we are trying to uh, empower teachers is to have all subject domains collaborating in the construction of the same knowledge. And uh, this project is uh, creating um, several tools uh, for this. One of them is this uh, science as a whole. Uh, it's going to, to, to have uh, an app. The app is not ready yet, but uh, you have what we call the science one. I don't, I, I'm not sure if uh, this is uh, already here. And the idea here is to have students uh, collaborating in the creation. Ah, we have to download in the creation of uh, of uh, the, the the knowledge. So you introduce several topics um, of several different domains, and using the science one methodology, they can uh, connect the different uh, knowledge around uh, what they call the uh, knowledge hexagon. So it, it's, it's a very nice uh, tool uh, that helps students understand how things are uh, somehow uh, connected when you're building knowledge. So I certainly don't have time here to, uh, to go in depth, but if you visit the website of the project, which is Polar, uh, okay, I, I, I will copy. Uh, Copy this to the chat, it's here. Well, it's not the main page, but you can navigate there. Um, so the, the, the idea is to, to contextualize learning. So uh, this, uh, this science as a whole uh, was uh, built on top of another kit that we have created in the framework of a project called Platon, which I will show you soon, that builds on the big ideas of science. And the idea of the big ideas of science is that um, when you're teaching science to the students, you don't have to package them in physics, chemistry, biology, geology. You can work around concepts and have all these science domains working together 
to enrich that particular concept. And you can have all the other disciplines working together so that, uh, it, again, it is contextualized and complete the knowledge acquired by the students. So the students understand that when I'm learning about a certain topic, for instance, imagine I'm learning about gravity. It's important that I understand uh, how, how, what is gravity and uh, how from Newton gravity evolved to Einstein vision of gravity and uh, what was the con context, the historical context that Newton was living in when he made all his uh, discoveries. The same for Einstein and all the other scientists in the way. And you can also um, uh, go for topography or geology. You, you can connect different parts of the knowledge under the same concept. And, and this is how the, the big ideas of science are working. And the science as a whole is a tool that helps teachers create together with the students the, their vision of science as a whole. So each classroom, each group of students will have science as a role, as a whole in a different way. But of course, you will need support. And for that, there is plenty of training materials. Uh, to, to help uh, teachers uh, go ahead. Well, the page was not found. Good. There's an error here. Uh, you have activities. There is a kit uh, with several activities related to the Arctic science and also related to astronomy. As you can see, you have already the solar system, surviving in space, gravitational waves, Earth observation, observing the skies. All of them are really very rich. And actually, there was a summer school devoted just to polar star. Um, uh, and there is going to be another one next year to which you can participate. And by then, more tools and resources are going to, to be ready. And um, what else can I say about uh, this? Uh, in in um, each of the, 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 the different parts of the project, you will find this small uh, Powtoon presentations that introduce you to what uh, it's being uh, envisioned for the, the, the use of the kit. Again, if you're not part of one of the countries where you have a national coordinator, Nuclear will be delighted to support you. Just have to, to, to tell us that you are interested and we will uh, introduce uh, your name um, as part of the project. And actually, I am sure that uh, you will find in the project uh, a way to manifest your interest and become part uh, of the project. The project has uh, social, its own uh, social media uh, and uh, you can follow everything that is uh, taking place uh, on the main website of the project. So as I said, um, the project builds on another project called Platon, which is a project, it was the first project uh, that uh, we had funded that enabled us to work on this uh, holistic view on science education. And in the framework of this project, uh, many of you participated in Platon, we had the possibility to create uh, the 3D map of science ideas. Uh, let me see if this uh, will work without giving me any grief. Ah, and I give you here, I put here to you on the chat as well, the link to Platon. Um, and, uh, so here is where the big ideas of science are introduced. They are not an idea of Platon, but they were enriched and transformed within Platon. And you can have the map of the ideas and you have tutorials on how you can use these uh, big ideas of science. So here you have the, 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 uh, the, the big ideas, uh, the, which are the ones composing the, the kit, but you can go to intermediate ideas, which are under each big idea, you have the intermediate ideas, which is connected to other ideas. And you also can go to the small ideas of science. And in, when you work with this uh, kit, you will find, uh, for instance, if you click on universe, you will see that it's connected to other small ideas. So you learn how to connect. Might seem very complicated, but it is not. It's very useful and very helpful. Again, we will be delighted to support you if you want to use uh, this uh, uh, methodology. And uh, we also introducing quite a base learning. Uh, and 
the idea here for those teachers that have never used inquiry-based learning, which is a methodology that engage students in building their own learning, a very strong methodology that exists since the 60s. Uh, it's it's, uh, um, it's um, usability and the success in, the, in building the knowledge of the students and to support the student, student construction of their science knowledge is a unique uh, model to work. It's the, using the scientific method with the students. And there is, uh, we have a course uh, here. You will find uh, these are just a sample of the course. Uh, we have a MOOC for that. And you have uh, components. You have uh, uh, a whole toolkit that helps you navigate the world of uh, inquiry-based learning with cards that help you go step by step. So you see here, you have the inquiry components, uh, the component one, two, three, it's, it's built in nine components and you can download it. And it is done in Portuguese, in Spanish, in, and in Greek. You find in all that, uh, those languages, um, you find uh, the, the resources in the Platon website. So again, it's a very uh, good source to learn about interdisciplinary learning and inquiry-based learning. The other part that was missing, ah, and uh, in here, if you click in this roadmap, you can find a book, uh, sorry, not this one, not this one. You can find uh, a book that was uh, created as a result of the implementation with all the tips and tricks on how to work with these methodologies with your students. So this was what we have produced in Platon. We had another project called Island Diversity, where we went one step further and we included uh, uh, several assessment tools and we created, uh, we introduced students to the design, uh, teachers and students to the design thinking approach. I'm not going to detail this project. Again, I'm going to put here the link to this project where you you'll find several tools that are very help, helpful to promote this type of methodology with your students. And you have several concrete examples on how to work with students uh, like this. And the full story is again, in uh, if you go to uh, the tools and resources, I think it's here uh, that you will find the roadmap. If not, I will put uh, the, the directly the roadmap to you exactly. This is the link where you find the, the roadmap that was also created by Island Diversity that helps you navigate the design thinking methodology, which is one of the, the methodologies that I have presented to you at the beginning of this week. It's a very powerful method, methodology to work with your students, to get to, to know them and to, to get them uh, uh, get uh, more involved in their own learning path. And uh, the, 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 the next uh, development for us was, okay, we know how to use the big ideas of science. We know how to do interdisciplinary uh, learning and inquiry-based learning, uh, but we need to support educators a little, a little bit better on how to, uh, to, use, uh, to, in, to, to, to promote inclusion uh, with the students. And I have already showed to you uh, the, 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 the kit, uh, the, sorry, the lesson that we have created, and I gave you the link, it's uh, in, in the uh, virtual campus that helps you navigate uh, in the uh, universal design for learning, which is an uh, inclusive approach. You have this and how to avoid uh, uh, stereotypes. Uh, this lesson is very complete and have uh, very nice uh, tips and tricks. Uh, on how to avoid, um, to, to be inclusive and to avoid uh, stereotypes. And in this project, the team, there are uh, a series of lessons that were created that are adopting uh, this uh, approach. They are more related to, to, to uh, environment, specifically climate change, uh, water management, 
um, renewable in rene renewable energy and of course the universal design for learning. You will find several very interesting resources here. They are translated also to, to, to Portuguese, Greek, uh, English, in, in English and in Spanish. The Portuguese version is not completely ready, but it will be ready next uh, week for you to uh, consult and see um, a little bit more how you can implement a lesson using the inclusive approach. Uh, the other, uh, the other part um, uh, of uh, of this uh, approach uh, was developed, which is the design thinking, is developed in this project. Um, here you have the link where you find lots of, uh, which is called open schools for open societies. And here you have several good examples on, uh, I'll click here in the accelerators, which are the examples created by the partners. And you find here uh, several examples that were created by us that helps you navigate across uh, uh, the design thinking uh, methodology for instance, we have one uh, that is about UV radiation, and you can copy these projects and uh, you can use them, uh, make a copy of this uh, project uh, with your students, and they will learn how to do design thinking with their community while uh, developing uh, uh, responsible research and innovation. And you find here a, a specific. Um, let me see if I can open it. You find a specific uh, instructions on how uh, you should orient your students to work across the different uh, steps of design thinking. I know I'm talking about several different methodologies and of course we don't expect you by all means to start and dive into all of these. It's just that if you are interested in one of these and you want to learn one of these, or if you just, okay, I'll keep these links and I will explore this one per year, one per month, one per every 10 years. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it's just, I want to make sure that you know that there are uh, teacher-friendly resources to help you uh, navigate uh, the different methodologies that you might wish to adopt there. Because you frequently, you hear all these talks about, oh, inclusiveness, universal design for learning. It's very nice. How do I do it? A few examples that are not really connected and I don't really how to, how to do this. Oh, you have to prevent stereotypes. Yeah, but how exactly? Oh, you have to use design thinking. Great, but how exactly? And you find lots of academic papers, which are brilliant, but they don't really help you do it in practice. And Platon, Island Diversity, OSSOS, uh, uh, Polar Star are, uh, uh, in, are giving you concrete examples on how to implement it, or these stars or, or our space, our future are giving you concrete examples on how to give the floor to your students. And this is uh, what we really wanted uh, to, to, to share with you, that you have uh, the, the, the capability of uh, learning at your own pace. Uh, and, and speaking of learning at your own pace, um, and knowing uh, the challenges that we have now, uh, that you have now ahead of you, the problem that you might find is, okay, I know there are plenty of resources out there and uh, there are open repositories, like uh, for instance, OSOS is one of such repositories. The problem is that you will find here, it's an open uh, education resource. Open education resources mean any one of you can find a repository and publish your resource there, okay? There is no guarantee that uh, there is quality to, uh, to, to the resources that you will find. So learning how to use and verify the quality of open educational resources is a skill that you have to acquire. And in uh, this project called Open Teach, we are producing a, a MOOC that will help you, uh, okay, this is in Portuguese, that's very, very interesting. It uh, uh, understood that I am in Portugal, but I don't want it in Portuguese. I want it in English. Okay, uh, maybe here I can say in English, yes. 
great. I didn't know it was doing this automatically. So Open Teach will create this uh, MOOC where you will be able to learn how to uh, find resources. You will learn how to uh, rate resources. You will learn how to um, produce uh, resources, how to uh, repurpose resources, how to learn about uh, uh, copyrights, etc. So this is a project that is being built uh, that will help you uh, when you need to, to, to work online. There are more projects. There is one called Design City. There is no website yet. I guess there is no website web yet. Let me see. Design City. I don't think there is the placeholder. No, there is no placeholder yet. Uh, the project is brand new, but in Design City, uh, you will be able to find resources that are using uh, the different methodologies in a step-by-step -step mode so that you can adapt to your uh, own lesson. So you see, it's, it's a, a full set of tools. So it's not only the content, which we are training you in, in, in projects like uh, uh, this training that uh, you are participating, the Global Hands-On Universe workshops that are going to come uh, very soon, and uh, the ESA GTTP training workshop that will probably take place in October, where we train you about uh, the, con the specific content and resources for this uh, content or the kit that is going to appear here. Um, it's also about how to use the different methodologies. Okay, So we really want to make sure that uh, you don't feel lost. And uh, if you do feel lost, just contact us. I'm, I'm going to stop sharing so I can read the, the I can read the, 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 the chat. If you do feel lost, you just contact us uh, and we will find a way to support you navigate methodology or a specific project or find a resource that you need. You, we will always try to find a way uh, to support you, okay?